Hey guys, my name is Calvin and uh, yeah, you can hear it. It's time for another English video tutorial. In the last year I produced a lot of tutorials, but they were all in German language and um, yeah, I need a little bit more practice in talking English. Uh, so I think this video is a good start to come back with more uh, English video tutorials on YouTube. And I hope you can, uh, you, you still can understand my English language. And the topic of this video is my raw workflow. And uh, well, it's not uh, just the raw workflow, it's, it's more about the raw workflow when I uh, like to create images, uh, what are a little bit more edgy, high contrast, many details. And uh, I do not work in this video in Photoshop. I would show you that you can uh, um, create this effect um, just in RAW. When you have a good photography, a good foundation, but I will talk about this in the next couple of minutes. Uh, the first seconds here is just to say, hello, I'm back, uh, I hope so, <laughs> I'm back with uh, more English tutorials and I appreciate that you watch this video and now enjoy my raw workflow for edgy portraits, high contrast portraits. Let's get started. All right, now you can see the image where I uh, will show you my raw workflow. And uh, before we get started to adjust here um, uh, the sliders, I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, the photography part. Um, I shot this image a couple of uh, weeks ago um, outside of a building in front of this uh, wall or I don't know what material that is, wood woody wall <laughs> and um, what you can see is a very unique guy with tattoos a little bit stronger guy and this is uh, the first part what is very important to create an image like this um, because you can't apply all the techniques what I will show you in the next minutes uh, to every model you can apply it to a beauty model um, so what you need is a good model um, what uh, will work with the techniques what I would show you in the next minute. And uh, this is a guy what is uh, perfect, tattoo. Um, we have here uh, jeans with many details, a shirt with many details and the, the guy, the background is uh, important as well. And uh, the lighting for this image was uh, pretty simple. Uh, what I had is one main light coming a little bit uh, from uh, the top was an octabank don't ask me the size of the octabank um, well it's not so important what was important for me um, to have a good raw file a good foundation and you can see here we have everywhere details even the shadows maybe you can see it very good in the screen capture but um, we have details here in the shadows and this is very important for me so when I take the picture live uh, I will check the shadows and the highlights and you can uh, do it here by clicking on that uh, two arrows here. And you can see there are no red color, maybe a little bit blue color here, what is uh, black. And that's fine. And this is what I do when I take my picture. I, I take care about the highlights and shadows. I know the highlights here are a little bit bright, but you can see it. There are still some details inside. Um, but I have to go uh, or I have to... Um, uh, use the octabank uh, a little bit stronger because I need the details here as well. So this is not blown out, but uh, nearly to blown out highlights. All right, so before I uh, show you my raw conversion, let me open this file here in Photoshop and uh, let's create a new smart object VR copy that you can see later the before and after. All right, the first thing what I do, what, what is very important for this edgy style, for this high contrast style, this kind of an HDR style is, um, you need details everywhere in the highlights and the shadows. And in the uh, latest version in Photoshop CC, um, you have two very interesting sliders. By the way, you can apply everything in Lightroom as well in the latest version. So uh, I do it with Camera Raw, but you can apply it with uh, Lightroom. So we have two sliders, the highlight sliders and the shadow sliders. So what I do here is um, I bring the highlight slider to the left side and you can see we have now much more details in the shirt. Yeah, and I do it a little bit more than necessary to minus 100. And the same with the shadow slider. 
we have shadows and we have details in the shadows, but I like to have more. And by changing these two sliders, you can see we can get this kind of a little bit of an HDR look. And this look, many people write me, ah, oh, it looks a little bit like a painting. Of course, it's not a painting, but it looks not natural. And that's why people think it looks like a painting. But it's not. But it's a little bit more HDR. And there are many people out there who think, oh, now I have the secret. Highlights down, shadows up. I can do it with every image. Uh-uh, you can't do it with every image. I told you, you need a good photography. You need a, a unique guy, a right, the right guy, a right background, and a good lighting where you have everywhere a little bit details and a little bit um, details in the shadows and in the highlights. This is very important. Otherwise, this effect will not work. But we are not done. I have a few steps more, what I do here. So this was step number one. Highlights down, shadows up, and again, it will only work when you have a good photography. You can apply it on every image. Every good retouching starts with a good photography. So take care about the photography and the lighting. All right, the next step is the sharpness. I like to have it very, very sharp. So let me zoom in here. This is a sharp image. Um, don't ask me what lens I used. I guess the 85 millimeter 1.8 lens and a prime lens. Uh, very good quality. And right here, I apply sharpness. Of course, you can sharpen the image at the end. You can do it. But this is a raw file. And all I like to apply is a basic sharpness. And most of the time, I use the same radius. Or let's uh, uh, say it again. Uh, not most of the time, all of the time, I use a radius of 0.6. What I use sometimes in a very different way is the amount when I do beauty retouching, a very low amount, maybe 50 or 60. But in this case, I like to have it very rough, edgy. So let's choose here something around 90. But it depends on your image. Play around. One, uh, 0.6 is, is a value what I use uh, most. No, all of the time. And the amount can be a little bit different. It's up to you. All right, now we have a sharp image and uh, many details and shadows and highlights. But it still looks a little bit natural. All right, and what I don't like to have is a is an image what looks like in photography. So I have to apply a, a few more things. What is not normal? What is not um, what I can't capture in photography? So I have to change the reality a little bit to create this look. What I'm talking about, and uh, a color color is very important. So let's change the color a little bit. And in this case, what I don't like is the red skin tone. It's a little bit too red. Um, we have many gray tones here, less saturation, and the skin tone looks very red. So this, this technique, what I show you now, is a very good technique, and you can apply it uh, in beauty retouching as well when you uh, like to fix a red skin tone. So you can go here to camera calibration, and right here you can change the red primary. You can, when you have a very magenta skin tone, I mean, uh, he's not looking like this, but if you have an image where a skin tone is a little bit more like this, bring it to the right side because uh, a skin tone looks much better when, a when there's a little bit more orange inside. So I change that a little bit and I like to desaturate the skin tone because I like to create a, a special look. So let's desaturate the skin tone. Now uh, it looks much better. Here the skin tone is uh, too saturated, so desaturate. And now everything is in the a, in a same tonality or a little bit the same saturation, and it makes more sense to me. All right. And uh, the image looks a little bit flat. When we look at this guy and the wall, what do you think? Soft or hot? Low contrast or high contrast? When, when you look on the background and this guy, I can't think about soft. I can't uh, think about low contrast. So let's change this to add a little bit more contrast here. But take care when you add more contrast, the saturation um, will, ra will rise up uh, as well. So bring down the saturation just a little bit. And uh, another uh, great tool to make an image a little bit more dirty is the clarity slider. 
mo most of the Germans think, because the German name, name for the clarity slider is Klarheit, that means something like clear, yeah? Maybe it's same here, clarity, but it makes the image not clear. Clear means, to me, clean. But um, uh, here, clarity makes the image, let's say, hard, rough, edgy. And if you need this effect, then you can apply it. Most of the time, I apply it maybe to 10 or 20. Um, but in this case, I can go up. Maybe not so much, but uh, I guess this is a good value here. All right. And uh, you can see it. it gets better and better or stronger and stronger. I mean, better or better. Not uh, everybody like this look. Uh, but uh, when you compare it to, to the raw file, it looks very different. But we are still not finished. What else uh, um, is here necessary? Well, um, when I take a look at the brightness of the image, I have here a brighter part in the image. Here is a darker part. And I like to bring the focus of the viewer more in this part. So what I do here, um, I choose the radial filter. It's a very new tool uh, in Photoshop CC. And with this radial filter, I can uh, bring up here um, a circle, let's say circle, and um, then I can adjust uh, everything. You can see here, I can adju adjust everything inside and outside. In this case, I like to adjust outside, the part outside. And in this case, I like to make it a little bit darker. Now, the brightness of the image is uh, nearly everywhere the same, maybe outside a little bit less. And I apply a new one here, another one. And in this case, um, I like to make the, the part around him a little bit darker, but not so much, just a little bit. All right. Okay. And now at, yeah, well, let me click here again. And this is a good thing. You can change it whenever you like. So I have to adjust it here a little bit. It's a little bit difficult here in the screen capture because my resolution is not so good and I can see it not very good, but this works good to me. All right. And uh, now, what about a color look? Yeah, the image uh, looks not natural anymore in contrast, in light. Yeah, this is not the light what came out of my camera. Well, maybe I can create the same light scene um, with photography. That's possible. But sometimes I do not have the time, I do not have the equipment, so I do it in RAW with the radial filter. But what I can't do in camera, uh, I like to manipulate the color a little bit. And here's a great uh, look, what you can create in uh, Photoshop as well, a very popular technique. You can go into the um, channels of, of your curve, into the blue channel, and you can apply a little bit more blue into shadows and a little bit more yellow into the highlights. Let's do some fine tuning here. And let me add a little bit grain. I know most of the photographers hate hate it when, when uh, the image is a little bit noisy, but I love it. Uh, I mean, the, the image here is perfect to add more grain. Let me add more grain here. And most of the time, the people do not zoom in so much. Um, so let's add a little bit grain to make it a little bit more dirty, not so clean. And take a look. I mean, I love it. Let me apply it here a little bit. And let's compare... Um, uh, and uh, let me show you that be before after. Well, this is uh, just raw. Of course, you can do more, much more in Photoshop. There are no dodging and burning. Um, I, I will not say it's necessary to do something in Photoshop, but, um, well, I prefer to keep on going now with Photoshop, a little bit more, more dodging and burning and uh, retouching. But take a look. Before, it looks good, but normal and here it looks different the, the image have a style uh, it's a little bit more high contrast and the reasons to get to create this style of course is the raw conversion you saw it but don't forget the photography part it's very important to have a good model a great background and a good lighting all right and if you like to change later something just double click here on your uh, icon and then you can change maybe the color, temperature, or whatever you like. But this is, uh, I'm very happy with the result. Let's apply 100. Yeah. So, another before, after. This is uh, what I like uh, the most at the end. Before, after, before, after. I can, I can do it all the time. Before, after, before, after. 
All right, guys. Um, I hope you like this uh, technique and I hope you can apply it to your images. Give them a try, play around, apply your own techniques, change it a little bit if you like. Um, this was my first uh, English tutorial after a while and uh, I appreciate your feedback. Give me a thumbs up, share this video if you think it's good enough and uh, then I will do more English uh, videos, uh, of course. If you like to buy some English classes, sorry for the advertising, but uh, I'm sure many people are interested in buying English classes. You can find me on Calbi One. Um, uh, there are uh, many classes and you can check out my website, photoshopfreaks.com. But I will do more in English on YouTube. All right, guys, thank you so much and see you soon.